Yeah. It's we still oh, one minute. He's already on, so go ahead. Good morning and Merry Christmas. Good morning. Good morning. can see a star shine and its splendor fills up the sky it's the same that appeared and the wise men revered when hope was born this night out upon the snowy fields there's a silent peace that heals and it echoes the grace of our Savior's embrace Because hope was born this night Glory to God in the highest Peace on earth, goodwill toward men Let all of the world sing the chorus of joy Because hope was born this night I can hear the Christmas bells ring As softly a church choir sings It's the song used to praise the Ancient of Days When hope was born this night There are angels in this place And my heart resounds with the praise like a shepherd so scared I'll rejoice and declare That hope was born this night Glory to God in the highest Peace on earth, goodwill toward men Let all of the world sing the chorus of joy Because hope was born this night Glory have joined us both in person and online. I just ask that you will stand to sing with us.
may be seated. Good morning. The mic is on. Uh, thank you, Billy. Um, I'm glad to be here. I hope everyone else is glad to be here as well. It's good to see all the faces out there. Hi, people who are not here. I'm glad you're here to see our, our smiling faces. I wish I could see yours. Um, we are glad that you do tune in to it, though. Um, and uh, I did want to mention a couple things. One, we do have offering envelopes out back um, next to the communion. So if you have offering envelopes that you sign up to get, they are out back. And, and we have a little sheet to sign off that you pick them up, um, take them with you. And um, they'll be there until we pick them up. And then if you don't pick them up, we'll probably hunt you down and give them to you. Don't worry, we'll be, we'll be gracious about it, though. Um, don't be afraid. Um, but we are glad you're here, and I wanted to go over, too, that we have Christmas Eve service at 6 o'clock p.m. on Christmas Eve. Um, I did also want to mention in the bulletin that we have, uh, for 2022, we'll be uh, reading through the Bible. And uh, Bill has a plan, if you would like to have a plan to go along, um, just ask him and he will give you one, which Bill, by the way, I need one. I've been meaning to tell you that for the last few times you've told me and I keep forgetting. Um, now, just between the two of us, we have to remember. Um, my rate going this morning, it's not good. Um, I did want to mention we have some praises. Um, Rudy's grandson and his uh, granddaughter-in-law, they had COVID. Um, one of them is back to work. They're both doing much better. Um, and then Bill's great-grandson, daughter, great-granddaughter. See, there it is. It's just, at least I got the grand part. Um, she is, uh, all the tests that they, we've been praying about, all the tests came back good. She's doing much better. Um, so we appreciate the prayers. I did want to add to it, though, that uh, uh, Bob Masters is, uh, has pneumonia. He doesn't have COVID pneumonia, but he has pneumonia. Bob and Rose were not doing so great. Rose is doing much better. Um, but he is, Bob is fighting pneumonia, and um, it's, it's really hitting him pretty hard. So continued prayers for the Masters family. Um, I did want to mention, though, that uh, Wayne is back here with us. He is home right now. He will be having, yeah. he will be having surgery, but he's feeling well enough that he's here today, and we're so grateful for that. So grateful for that. So thank you for your prayers and continued prayers. Um, I did see Terry and Linda Bolton. They were here this morning. Terry said he's doing great. Linda said we have clothes that we dressed in this morning, so we're here. Um, so it's hitting her a little bit harder. She's, she's trying to keep Terry down, and I know that's a fight. He doesn't want to, and the doctors are saying you need to just stay down for a little bit. And then Judy Coffey is here. It's great to see her here this morning as well. Um, I did want to mention, though, to the two little boys we've been praying that have cancer. They got to ring the bell. They are cancer-free. Yes, praise the Lord. So Hendrix and Lakota are cancer-free. So thank you for your prayers. And uh, we've missed them very much. Mom has got a promotion at her job, which requires now Sunday work. So we miss them very much. Um, but um, continued prayers for them as well. Um, I think other than that, I got everything covered. I would ask that you all rise. And Aaron is going to lead us in prayer. Father God, I thank you for allowing all of us to be in your house today to worship and learn more about you. Today we all acknowledge the fourth candle of Advent being lit as we prepare for the birth of your Son who brings peace to all. I pray that you grant all the world peace in knowing why you have brought your Son into this world, to die for our sins so that we may be saved. I pray that today the lost will find you and they will feel an unshakable peace that nothing in this world can offer them besides you. In your name, amen. It came upon a midnight clear, that glorious song of old, from angels bending near the earth to touch. Oh, 
stillness lay to hear the angels sing. For long the days are hastening on, thy prophet God's foretold. When with the ever circling years comes round the age of But thou, Bethlehem, Ephrates, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall be come forth unto me, that is, a, be a ruler of Israel, whose going forth have been from of old for everlasting. Therefore will he give them up until the time that she which travails have brought forth, and then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. And he shall. Uh, oh, I'm in your mind. And he shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord as God, and they shall abide. For now shall he be great unto the ends of the earth and the most and the men shall be the peace.
from thy holy face. With the dawn of redeeming grace, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. How beautiful when the voices of God's people unite in praise and we sing the wonders of Christ's birth. It was 1938. A number of the world's leaders had met in Munich, Germany with German Chancellor Adolf Hitler. And they signed what came to be known as the Munich Agreement, which in essence ceded certain lands that didn't belong to Germany to Germany because of their military might. Upon returning to Great Britain, the British Prime Minister, Neville Chamberlain, spoke these words to the citizens of the United Kingdom. My good friends, for the second time in our history, a British Prime Minister has returned from Germany bringing peace with honor. I believe it is peace for our time. Go home and get a nice quiet sleep. Almost two years to the day later, in September of 1940, Germany's Air Force launched what we now know as the London Blitzkrieg. From September of 1940 to May of 1941, every night, German bombers rained terror and death down upon London and other locations of the United Kingdom. Such is the way of man. We make peace treaties. We sign accords. We have peace talks. We say we'll get along, <laughs> and then we war. Nation wars against nation, political party against political party, spouse against spouse. We do not know the way of peace. All you have to do is look around. But approximately 700 years before Jesus was born, God spoke through the mouth of his prophet, Micah, the words which Rudy and Betty read for us, thank you, and spoke of one who would bring peace. I want to reread the words just so they're fresh in our minds, but I'm going to add verse 1. Now muster yourselves in troops, daughter of troops. They have laid siege against us. With a rod they will smite the judge of Israel on the cheek. But as for you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you one will go forth for me to be ruler of Israel. His goings forth are from long ago, from the days of eternity. Therefore he will give them up until the time when she who is in labor has borne a child, then the remainder of his brethren will return to the sons of Israel. And he will arise and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they will remain. Because at that time he will be great to the ends of the earth. This one will be our peace. This one will be our peace. You see, I add verse 1 because it gives us just a little bit of context. It points out to us that distress, fear, and war that was brewing was just outside the boundaries of ancient Israel. God was going to use the Assyrians 
If you've read the Old Testament, or even if you just read ancient Middle Eastern history, the Assyrians under King Sennacherib were going to be God's instruments of judgment upon his people. Sounds harsh, doesn't it? An invading army that is going to defeat you. But God had to somehow awaken his people to their not only neglect of him, but their turning to other gods. You see, Micah begins his short little book, and I'd encourage you to read the book in its entirety. It's a very short one uh, this afternoon or throughout the days of this week. But here's what we read in the very first seven verses. And verse seven is the definitive verse of, of what was causing these problems. The word of the Lord, which came to Micah of Moresheth in the days of Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, which he saw concerning Samaria and Jerusalem. Hear, O peoples, all of you. Listen, O earth, and all it contains. And let the Lord God be a witness against you, the Lord from his holy temple. For behold, the Lord is coming forth from his place. He will come down and tread on the high places of the earth. The mountains will melt under him. The valleys will be split like wax before the fire, like water poured down a steep place. All this is for the rebellion of Jacob and for the sins of the house of Israel. What is the rebellion of Jacob? Is it not Samaria? What is the high place of Judah? Is it not Jerusalem? For I will make Samaria a heap of ruins in the open country, planting places for a vineyard. I will pour her stones down into the valley and will lay bare her foundations. Verse 7. All of her idols will be smashed. All of her earnings will be burned with fire. All of her images I will make desolate. For she collected them from a harlot's earnings, and to the earnings of a harlot they will return. You see, what God is speaking of is judgment, because not only, as I said, had they neglected God, but they had turned to those which are no gods. And, and we need to be careful, because when we read the Old Testament, we tend to picture those false gods, those idols, in terms of carvings of wood or stone or precious metals, and that people bowed down and prayed to these idols. But an idol simply is anything or anyone that takes the place of God in our devotion and our affection and our worship. The people of 2021 are as guilty oft times of idolatry as were the people of Israel 700 BC. Don't be deceived. There are many gods, small g, that vie for our devotion and our worship. Israel turned like a harlot to other lovers. And God is a jealous God. He will not share his glory with another. And as you read through Micah, let me warn you just a little bit. It's heavy and it's dark and it's depressing. It is a book of judgment. But in the midst of that judgment, there are these verses that we've heard twice this morning. A child is going to be born. And what a child he will be. And that's what we celebrate today. That, that, that's what we celebrate all the time. God has come and dwelt with man Notice some of the things that he says. I just want to highlight about five of the statements out of here. He begins simply with Bethlehem. He's talking about this judgment that's going to be brought against Israel and brought against Jerusalem. But then he says, But as for you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, too little to be among the clans of Judah. Just this little, little bitty burg. It's, it's, it's the kind of place that I always expected to be acknowledged on hee-haw when they went salute. Do you remember that? You don't. You're too young. But, you know, hee-haw was, was wonderful. You know, that little country show, and they were always recognizing the small burgs of America. At Bethlehem would fit into that category. What'd they have to offer? A lasting legacy. Who was their favorite son? Do you remember? Who came from Bethlehem? David, king of Israel. 
David, who we read so much of through Old Testament and New. And one of the promises to David was what? That one of his descendants would rise to be king forever and forever and forever and forever and then forever. The son of David. We know who that is. Jesus. Oh, and where was he born? Bethlehem. This little inconsequential village. Oh, goodness, might as well have been Creef Corps, Illinois. The wonders of God in our midst. We ought to marvel, folks. We ought to marvel. And the prophet says, out of this little town, King David's boyhood, boyhood home, from you, one will go forth. Just that this unique one, he is going to come from you and listen to the impact that he'll have. The first thing after that that the Micah points out is that he, he is from the days of eternity. His coming and going are from long ago, from the days of eternity. He, he's not just saying that this is a human being with some kind of supernaturally extended lifespan. He's taking us back even to before creation. He's taking us back into eternity and helping us to understand that this one is Emmanuel, God with us. The Apostle John picks up on this and he begins his gospel, uh, his prologue, with words that we quote so often. They mean a lot to me. I have them highlighted in my Bible. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, and then I'm going to read verse 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, now all things came into being through him, and apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Verse 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw his glory, glory as of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. The Word became flesh. God born, wrapped in human form. <laughs> the Creator. Did you notice? There's nothing that has been that He did not make. Jesus the Creator. And yet the Creator of all things becomes the created <laughs> in the form of a baby. And He brings to us grace and truth. He brings to us the mercies of God. What Micah had foretold so long ago. And he brings us illumination. He brings us truth that in a world that is filled with so many gods, small g, we can see the one who is God with a capital G. What a wonder. And Micah speaks with expectation. He, he, he says, when she who is in labor has born a child... When he, she who is in labor is born a child. Isaiah talks about that. Remember, it's Isaiah who says that the virgin will be with child and she shall give birth. And his name shall be. Micah says the same thing. And so for 700 years, Israel had lived in anticipation of the birth of a baby. You know, all of those of us who are parents or grandparents, aunts or uncles, which includes, I'm sure, all of us, we know the eagerness and the expectation and the anticipation of the birth of a child. Gretchen's and my fourth daughter, Janai, was due on Friday. She's still not in labor. She's complaining all over our little family chat that we do. When's this baby going to come? Get this baby out of me. But we're all so excited for her birth. We can hardly wait. And I know, being grandpa, she's going to be an exceptional child. But as much as I love her and as exceptional as she'll be, nothing like this one. Nothing like this one. 
The Apostle Paul picks up on this, and in the book of Galatians, chapter 4, verses 4 and 5, we read these words. But when the fullness of the time came, God sent forth His Son, born of a woman, born under the law, so that He might redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons, and yes, ladies, as daughters too. Get that? Adoption as the children of God. That's who we are. Why? Because of this one who is our peace. This one who is our peace. How will he reign? Not as a Caesar. Of course, he was born in those days of the Caesars and the power and the might.